Now these are the tools that I use to put everything together. You don't really need every single one that you see here, but it makes the job extremely easy. Right down here we have thread locker. This happens to be blue thread locker. Now the manual states you don't have to use thread locker. I just think it's a nice thing to use because it keeps the bolts nice and tight. Don't use the red. The red is permanent, but the blue keeps everything tight and you can remove the bolts if you had to. There's a half inch drive and a three inch drive ratchet, adjustable crescent wrench, Phillips and a flathead. And then 14 millimeter, in most cases I use this uh, 14 millimeter end. Get a wrench that's angled, makes the job a little bit easier. And then a ratcheting wrench, or you can just use a socket and a, uh, and a ratchet. Regarding the size of the bolts, they're rather big, 24 for the larger ones. And 21, I think there's one that just uses the smaller 21. And this is a long pair of pliers. This makes the job very easy, which I'll show you in a moment, attaching the caster bolts to the rear of the frame. Your hands are just too small. So you get yourself a long screwdriver, a long pair of pliers. Makes the job extremely easy. Now the manual does include an identification chart. Now when you use this chart, you want to make sure that you line up the shaft of the bolt. Don't include the hex nut on top, okay? Because it won't exactly match up. So this is just the shaft of the bolt. And they tell you which bolt to use at each step. So for example, in this first step, you have to use a large caster bolt 6A and just match up the large caster bolt 6A. When we get later on the instructions, it may get a little confusing. As you can see, these bolts are pretty close on, for the example, these two. But nevertheless, I'll tell you exactly which is the correct bolt. And uh, that will at least make the job a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. Now, the kit does include six wheels. You have four large caster wheels and two small set of caster wheels. In this case, we're attaching the large set, two of them. To the base these happen to be 14 millimeter ends both for the nut and the bolt and uh, i just use a wrench and a ratcheting wrench just to tighten everything down now regarding the ones in the rear you have two in front as you can see there and then you have the rear ones now the rear ones are really hard to do without using a pair of pliers your, your hands are just too small to fit into the frame and hold the nut as you thread the bolt so just grab yourself a long set of pliers you can hold the nut with your free hand, just thread in the bolt. Makes the job so much easier. It's a world of difference. Just if you don't have a long set of pliers, grab one. It just makes the job uh, so much easier. Very, very quick and very seamless. And then just go ahead, tighten everything down, and you're ready to rock and roll to the next step. And this is what it looks like once you finish attaching those large caster wheels. Next step is attaching the small set of caster wheels to the base. In this case, you're using Phillips size screws, not hex nuts. Again, use thread lock, tighten everything down. It's a quick process, and then you, you're ready to move on to the next step. Now, the next step is attaching the remaining two caster wheels, and this will also wrap up the caster nut and bolt set. So just go ahead and attach the caster wheels to the frame. Again, use the long set of, of, of pliers to help you get to the rear of those bolts. Use thread lock, tighten everything down, and once you wrap everything up, this is what the end product looks like. So now we're ready to slide the legs into the front of the base. Now the legs are held on using these locking pins. At the end of the locking pins you have these, essentially they're, they're body clips in a sense, uh, but they just clip right into the pin and that's it. Now when you insert the, the locking pin, you do have to lift up on the frame just a little bit on the base, just so all the holes line up. The base lines up with the leg, uh, but it's self-explanatory. Just put everything together, slide the pins through, lock them with the body clip. So now we're attaching the post to the bottom of the frame. Now to do this, you have to use the boom bolt part number two, happens to be a 14 by 100 millimeter, now, but there are two 100 millimeter bolts included in the kit. The way that you can quickly tell if, you're use, if you are using the correct one is the boom bolt is a 21 millimeter hex end. So if, the other bolt is 24 millimeters. So just make sure that the hex is 21 millimeters, attach it, thread lock it, and then what I do is I'm using a crescent wrench to hold the bottom of the bolt. So as you can see here, I'm holding the bottom of the bolt using a crescent wrench. And then the top uh, ratchet there and the socket is a, is a 21 millimeter. And that's it. Once you tighten everything down, you're good to go.
Now we're ready to attach the support beams to the base or to the entire assembly. Now that there is one bolt on top, it's the largest bolt of the kit. It's a 24 millimeter hex end. And then you're using two slightly smaller bolts in terms of length on the bottom. They're both 24 millimeter ends, but the top bolt is just the longest one in the kit. And then you have two slightly shorter bolts that attach to the bottom supports. Thread lock it, put everything down, secure it, and then your, your support is ready to go. And then we'll attach the boom to, uh, to the assembly. So now we're attaching the boom to the entire assembly. Now the top bolt that you see here, again, it's the longest bolt in the kit, 24 millimeter uh, hex end, slide it through, thread lock it, tie everything down, and then you can move on to the next step. Now we're attaching the ram to the assembly. On the bottom, you have a 24 millimeter bolt, and then the top also is a 24 millimeter as well. And just like you've been doing this entire assembly, slide everything through, thread lock it, bolt it down, and then you're pretty much done. The only thing left is just a boom extension, and uh, you're pretty much ready to rock and roll after this. Now the very last step is just attaching the boom extension to the entire assembly. And this is the very, very last bolt used in the kit. I didn't have any extra bolts, nothing like that. Now the manual also states to attach the chain, but in my case the chain was already installed. I didn't have to do that. So mark up whatever setting you need. In other words, if you need a one ton, three quarter ton, half ton, whatever the case may be, tighten it down and you're ready to rock and roll. And this is essentially what the end product looks like. Now when it comes to folding the frame, it's pretty easy. The thing is you do have to lift some weight off the legs. So just to, let me show you, remove the clip in the rear. And then, as you can see, this doesn't come out that easily, okay? It doesn't slide out. You have to lift up on the base a little bit to take some weight off the leg. And there you go. And then this just folds up, like so. Insert the pin. Put this back on. Now we do it this way. Do it on both legs, and then you can go ahead and put this in the corner somewhere. Now the very last step is bleeding the system. Now I removed the oil plug right here, and there's no fluid in there whatsoever. So I don't know if that's every single one that Harbor Freight sells, to be quite honest. It may just be this one. I have no idea. But nevertheless, just check to see if you, if you do have hydraulic fluid. So we're going to bleed the system completely. So I'll show you on, on how you can quickly do that, and then once this is done, you'll be able to use this right away. So right here you have the release valve. They include this rod, and it just goes over the valve here. So clockwise is fully tightened. Counterclockwise is to loosen it. Okay, so loosen up that release valve. And then you want to make sure that the boom is in the lowest position, okay? That's as low as it goes. Now we're going to add in some hydraulic fluid. Now you're just going to fill up the hydraulic fluid until it starts coming out. Once it starts coming out, then it's completely full. So you want to make sure that the boom is in the lowest position again, and then you're going to operate the boom. And this bleeds all of the air out of the system. After you've done this for a few times, check the oil level again, make sure that it's full. If you need to add more, add some more. You will need at least a pint, without a doubt. At least that's what I needed in my case. It was a little over a pint. Uh, but nevertheless, just make sure everything, uh, that the fluid is completely full. Put the oil plug back in. Go ahead, turn this clockwise so it stops. And you're able to start using the jack immediately. And that's it. And I was able to get this for you know, Harbor Freight is funny, they always have sales. I was able to get this for $100 to ship. It was seven bucks, comes in two boxes, by the way. That's how they ship it for only $7. Comes in two separate boxes. And, uh, and that's it. So the next time we see this jack, we'll be pulling the motor out of our Z here. And uh, until then, thank you for watching.